Uh, but I definitely need an angel. Thank you for that selection. Uh, good morning, church. I know last time you guys saw me, it was like, what, five years ago. Yeah, um, when you do the math, well, four years ago, because Sydney's four now. Um, and last time I spoke was Pathfinder today, uh, right before we went off to Oshkosh. Um, uh, and um, I just really wanted to uh, allow God to use me as an instrument for you guys this morning. Uh, I, I feel there's a lot of things he put in my head, and I hope I got the time for it. I think I have, what, 30 minutes? No. No, no, let's, 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 let's try to stick it in 30 minutes. All right. But um, before we get started, let's, let's have a word of prayer. I didn't follow Lord. Thank you so much for this day. Lord, be with me in a special way. Be with my words. Allow it to touch someone's heart. Allow it to bring them either to peace or, or the strength that they need or even this increase of faith that they need. Uh, be with those that are still on their way to church. Uh, thank you for the, getting the one here safely and also allow us to continue to, to worship the Sabbath and celebrate the reason for this season. And thank you so much for giving your life to save us. For Christ's sake, amen. All right. A couple of things I thought about actually on the way to church. Believe it or not, I didn't think about it then. But I was like, wait, this is Easter weekend. Hopefully the church will be too packed. Or, you know, I won't feel too nervous. But um, ran to Pastor Sam downstairs, and he just shared to me, said, hey, man, you got it. So uh, th th this morning, um, the title of the sermon is Faith Increased by One. Let me hook this up really quick, and then I'm going to turn this on. You guys can switch this back and forth, but I'm going to do this up here for right now. Now, before I get started, um, I know a lot of people uh, know that I do a spoken word, and I ran to one young man, and he asked me if I'm going to do one. I said, you know what? I'll put something together for this season. And um, knowing that uh, some people look at Easter differently, you know, we all know the reason why it exists, right? And um, since I'm going to be up here, I'm going to let you guys know I'm a little nervous, but if I ask some questions, just say something back. So I make you feel like, you know, I'm not up here by myself. Um, so this one caters towards the resurrection of Christ. And it goes, getting a brain lock, hold on a second. I'm homesick. My body's like one of these Pathfinder tents, heavens where home is. I guess on this earth, God's people, we are actually homeless. Sure, like the future will run, people are going to stop and ask our young people, maybe in a West Indian voice, eh, but wait, aren't y'all young Christians, the unusual ones? Like they have money stored up in mutual funds. We have to tell them the riches we got is stored up after Jesus come, son. Numero one, Christ had to rip the veil. You see, it was bad blood between us like sickle cell and anemia. The media will continue to feed us lies and we eat it up quick like McDonald's and Wendy's. Actually, no, we eat it up quick like Chick-fil-A. We wish it open on a Sunday, hot, warm waffle fries. But my heart beating inside, long for the day when Christ would come and pull me aside and clothe me in white. I'd be more glorious than LeBron James, Kobe Wade, Curry, and even the Mikes. Hmm. But I get to see my homies, right? I get to see Carlos, Roger, Mike, Jason. May they all rest in peace, but I hope to get to see them in glory, right? We have to have a new attitude for a new earth, because I got proof. Jesus Christ resurrected, and I'm not duped. This is my objectivity, but it's not my truth. We're going to glory, y'all. How about you? I don't think you guys heard me. We have to have a new attitude for new earth, because I got proof. Last Friday and this Sunday is all we need to know. Amen. See, the he see, my heavenly father is not a rolling stone. 
But when the angels rolled the stone away, better known the Roman soldiers were blown away. They said he was stolen away. No, Jesus Christ died. He, he was he resurrected, then he folded, I bet you he folded his clothes, and then he stole himself away. Now, that's incredible. He showed himself the credible witnesses that witness his death, expect, expect for him to come out of the grave, as the scriptures had said, and they thought that Mary, and Mary was sick in the head when he reported what the scene with the eyes, so the disciples were skeptical, so they sent Peter and John to verify what they told them. Meanwhile, the highest priest was bribing the soldiers. The city said that his body was stolen by the disciples at night, but the story was leaking. He made appearance with his feet and near scarred hands. Even Josephus knew he was Jesus, the historical Christ. And you believe in some documentaries that actually have the nerve to say there's no evidence of God. And there's no evidence that Jesus was even alive. And I'm going to add plus dying because I'm not lying. Tell your friend to sit Gnostic because God's got no skeletons in his closet. Nope. Nowhere to be found. Not even his teeth. Nowhere in the ground. Why? Jesus is up in heaven rocking a crown. Disciples never watched him sin. So therefore, put my pathfinders, the P stands for having the power to be witnesses, as young as y'all are. How many of y'all know that when Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died, he resurrected, and his love poured in the rest of us? The C for Christians don't stand for being cowards. It stands for being confident. To know that there's going to be a God to come back down to this earth and rescue us. Plus, he already resurrected himself out of sepulchre. Now, if you have these facts, let's chat. Now, of course, I have to wait after sunset. I'll be more than happy to wrap. Because these things concern our faith. Jesus Christ's resurrection has determined our fate. And that is where the story begins. Our faith and fate. I entitled the sermon this morning, Faith Increased by One. All right. And, oh, here we go. Yeah. And this came to me, a couple of things that went on. You know, now owning a new business, I realize what one review can do, what one bad review can do. You know, those business owners know what I'm talking about. Or what, what increasing something by one to do. But you know, even though ones might seem like a small number, let's take a look at a few things. So, let me see if I connect this one more time. One more time, let me see if I connect it. Okay. All right, is it connected? All right, you guys can see it? The first, the first slide? Okay. Oh, you see my screen, all right, thank you. Now you can see it. All right, and there you go. See, that's why I need you guys to talk back to me. I start that slideshow. Appreciate it, Danny. See, man, I appreciate you being here, man. <laughs> Couldn't do it without you, bro. All right. Faith increased by one. The first slideshow shows a light bulb. And this light bulb is not connected to any type of electricity, right? But it's on. Some people ask the questions, how can that be? Even the reflection show that it's on, right? Now, we have different numbers. Let me see how I can get this thing to go. But wait, well, you know what? We keep it going. There we go. So one, number one, unit, unity, is a number representative of single or the only entity. It's also a numerical digit and represents a single unit of counting and measurements. Now, the number one that you see on the top left is what you would see um, when you type, right? But when you see the number one on the top right, what do you think about? Anybody, the top right. is. It's not going to be a wrong answer, I bet you. The top right, number one, what it look like to you? Like, when you see that number, what do you think of? Winner, yeah. Yeah, one. The one be below it, birthday. Now, even though the person who's celebrating the birthday really don't really know, but everybody else celebrating the birthday makes it a big deal. Either, you know, keeping that child alive, which is a big deal, all right? Um, Putting up with them for that first year is a big deal. And then what you do, you spend all the money, two cakes, one to smash and one to cut up. You know? Because it's that first birthday. You don't see it on second birthday or third. They're like, we already did that already. Right? Then the number one at the bottom, hashtag one. That lets you know that that's where you start. 
That's where you start. And at the bottom, on the right, it shows a trophy. That means that you have been above the rest. You celebrate. And the reason why they give you a trophy is so if you forget, you look back and say, you know what, I remember doing this. Now, this is where I get all the kids involved. People know what this is. How many kids here know what this is? Thank you. I know there's a child here that know what that is. It's a number block, all right? Uh, the days of seeing Sesame Street, I tell you, I remember last time I saw Sesame Street on TV, but the number blocks have taken over the counting world. If you guys didn't know, you better look it up and see. But number blocks, uh, they count all the way up to 100, all right? And even the song starts off one, two, three number blocks, right? And it goes all the way up to 10, and then at the end it says five, four, three, two, one. You could count on us. It's the number blocks. You guys ever heard that? Yeah. I guess, wait, well, hey, we got kids now in this. Never mind. Sure. All right, we can keep going. Anyway, but the number blocks, they count by ones, okay? And every one that goes additional, it shows the next number. Now, when number one subtracts from that number, it goes back to the original one, okay? Now, when it comes to the number one, we think that one is a small number, right? But we can talk about different platforms of one. One as a digit, one as a percent, one is a uh, degree. Now, let's look at this formula for a second. I don't know if you guys can see if it's too far away. I should have blown it up a little bit. But it's a square root of showing one. When a one is being square root by a different number, it's still one. But when a number is square root by one, it's still that same number. All right? Also, multiplication, when one is multiplied by that number, it's still that same number. But what's different here? One divided, when one is divided by another number, it decreases. And I started thinking about this some more on how, when things are being subtracted from you, either attention, either it's the, the, the focus on having a, a more stronger spiritual life, either it's being better at your job, either it's um, focusing more on maybe saving, it subtracts away from that. Now, 1%, okay, we can go into 1%. 1% is huge, okay? Now, when I walked in, I heard Brother Tony talking about, you know, you can't wait till you're rich to give back five, right? You can't, you can't, you can't wait. You got to start small. You got to start what you have and know, know to be within your means. And the principle is, it's called the principle of or arrogate marginal gains, and it's the idea that if you improve by 1% consistently, that's what I underlined it, those small gains will add up remarkably improvement, improvement. We will see this everywhere in our lives. Saving small amounts of money over time can build sums with the power of compound interest. That's why when you're younger, say save your money, save a little bit, and that's why I realized that when you tithes faithfully, right? It teaches you of how you can do with less. I remember when I was younger, I never used to understand it, but when I started tithing faithfully, I would have nothing in my bank account and everything would be paid off. I would have gas in my car. I wouldn't get an attitude if somebody asked me for a ride, you know, because I don't have the extra gas, but it just seems like that, that light never went off. Um, so so I, I've learned that especially when it comes to that percentage. Now, let's look at it, something else that we don't even think about. Gravity. Now, the percent of gravity, I don't know if you guys knew, but if gravity is slightly more powerful, the universe will collapse into a ball, all right? Also, gravity was slightly less powerful, the universe will fly apart. There'd be no stars, no planets. This shows, it shows just the gravity is precisely as strong as it needs to be. And if the ratio of the electronic magnetic force, sorry, and if the ratio of the electromagnetic force to be strong force wasn't 1%, life would not exist. So what's the odds of that? Right? So we don't even think about that. Just that 1%, if it was just off a bit. We wouldn't exist. Either way it goes, we wouldn't exist. So it's perfectly where it is. 
right? So when people ask about, you know, does God exist, I don't know, right? You, you got to tell them, hey, yes, it do. He does. Because through this alone shows that only a special being like that could create an equation that works like this, yeah. right? So without gravity, it shows now the moon moving away from the earth. With gravity, it shows it circles the earth. And again, the force with gravity acts between all objects. It masses increase, the force of gravity increases. And if distance increases, the force of gravity decreases. Now, if we could put this in different forms. We could talk about the people that comes into our lives. We could talk about, you know, the positive energy, negative energy. These things all work in the same way. Now, we can hop into one degree. Hopefully, I'm not moving too fast because we got a lot to talk about. I'm looking at the time. One degree. This is something special, especially coming to San Antonio. When I came to San Antonio, I didn't know that one degree matters so much in heat, right? And, and y'all are laughing, but when we were driving down here the first time, we were the only ones driving with our car windows down. Remember that, Kim? We were driving through San Marcos, and everybody looked at us and was like, you must ain't got no AC. Our AC worked. I was just enjoying. But when we came to stop, right around, I would say, when the traffic built up around 35, just the heat that ran into that car, I said, no, this cannot be. I mean, you just thought it was how the heat of the road was. And then I realized this was San Antonio. And then when I learned this, even being at the airport, working out on a tarmac, y'all don't understand. The heat at the airport is way different because you're dealing with all the heat from the aircrafts, you know, and, um, and you still have to work with protection clothes on. So I've lost a lot of weight when I first came. I sweated it out. But one degree is a big difference. Now, that symbol up top there, what's that called? Pi. Pi. How many young people know that? All right, they still teach that in school. Good. Whew. That's very important. All right? Pi. Pi divided by 180 degrees will give you one degree. Now, pi, we know the short term in school is 3.14. Now, the real number is this number. It keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. Now, the thing about this number is even if you move one number away from that, it's still not pi. All right? Again, number one, all right? Now, 211 degrees, water is hot, all right? I don't know if you guys ever did this test before, but at 211 degrees, water is hot. And at 212 degrees, it boils, all right? So, what, so what's the difference in the first number? One degree, one degree. And this is where it becomes interesting. So while preparing for this week's, uh, me speaking, there's a book that my mentor had given me, and it's called uh, 212, 212 Degrees of Customer Service. It's a little small red book. And I had it um, from Cincy Aviation, so when I started my business, I, um, I taught it to, you know, I was able to give it to my employees, say, you know what, y'all might want to read this book. Don't, don't let leave the shop, but just read it. It's very interesting. That 1%, all right, it says at 212, 211 degrees, water is hot, and at 212 degrees, it boils. And the, and the boiling water comes steam, comes steam. And then with steam, you can power a train. One extra degree makes all the difference. Just one extra degree, all right? That's like us being too busy every day and not taking one chance to say hello or that one chance to check up on somebody you haven't seen in a while, all right? We always wait, I mean, I mean, we all talk about it, when it's one of our loved ones, we get to see most of our families when someone passed away. And that's the most we see them. Even sometimes at weddings, they're like, oh, maybe I can't come, all right? But with funerals, we mostly see them. So that means that we need to make, take that time out to, to, to really spend that time to engage each other. Take the extra step. You know, I, I, one thing I, I, I admire about Pastor Sam is when he first um, came to came in San Antonio, the, the church, um, he got in contact with me. He gave me a call and we sat down and we talked. And that was the first time I ever met him. I didn't even meet him here. And I'll be honest with you, that was a fraction of what brought me back. A part of fraction, a big part of fraction. 
And it's because, you know, sometimes you don't realize the, the one difference that one person can take, you know. Sister, Sister Gill this morning sent me a text message of a prayer with my message this morning. I said, oh, man, I needed that at the right time, you know. Paul came in and said, hey, you got anybody for a children's story? I need that. You know, stepping up, that 1% makes a very big difference. Very big difference. Now, the verse that we read today from Luke uh, 14 to 17, uh, actually, yeah, sorry, 14, I'm sorry, 17 to 19. I'm just going to read it, shorten it up a bit. But it said, Jesus asks, we're not all ten cleansed. We are the other, where are the other nine? Has no one returned to praise God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Again, faith. Now this here is coming from the New International Version, all right? The next version is the King James Version. And it says, and Jesus answering said, where, where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give God the glory, sorry, to give glory to God. Save this, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. All right? Now, I remember back in the days when I was younger, the King James, the King James Version made, sound like a little town twister. It is. And from there, I think the International Version came out, and then the Clare Word, then the Student Bible. And then before you know it, as I got older, and someone say, turn to chapter whatever, no one read the same thing. And that's why we, we put the verse up that we read. Because it's even, even to the point that people will say, hey, what page are you on? Right? You can't find your verse by pages. You have to look by chapters, correct? So, so this next one is going to surprise y'all, but I want to let y'all know it exists. At first, I never thought it did, but it really exists. And it makes me wonder, why did they come up with a version of this Bible? But I'll tell you why. Here you go. The Gen Z. Yeah. 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 Now, the thing about this one here is pe people think that, you know, it isn't real, but this is how I, okay, put, put in a sense. Teaching the drum corps, I have the Gen Zs and the Gen Alphas in this drum corps. And the way they speak, I realize it is a different language. Now, to the all be like, no, it's not that deep. It is, because the first thing people think about is millennials. Do you know how old millennials are now? Exactly. So we should be focusing towards the alphas and the Gen Zs. We, they need our attention. They do, right? They really do. And when, and when you read it, but, but what I like in this is that it said, and Jesus was like, yo, don't heal 10 people. Didn't I heal 10 people? But like, where are the uh, here, not nine? Now you ask yourself that, is that English? <laughs> right? But when you hear them talk, like, I would hear the conversations. I'm like, y'all really don't talk like that, do you? <laughs> right? But then they say, well, Mr. Renil, like, what do you mean? Like, you understand it. I said, maybe I'm that bridge. Maybe I'm that bridge between the older group and the younger group that understand it. Now, there's some kids here that might say, no, they don't talk like that. But I know they do because I heard them. But um, going back from this, though, I sat down and said to myself, if this is how our young people now have a book for them. Imagine in the other generation what it's going to look like. It's going to happen even more, right? It may be just be gestures. It'd be like, mm. And people laugh about it, but I'm being real. Because I'm 43 years old, about to be 44, and I've, I remember the only book that I had to try to read out of was the King James Version, and now there's so many versions out there, you cannot even count. Even from your iPhone app, you can't even count, right? So when I read this, I said, you know what? I got to break this down in size, bite-sized pieces. So what I started doing is researching some more about one. So I started looking up formulas of one. But while searching this up, this popped up. 
Formula One, Federation International Automobile. That's the Formula One World Championship. This is a symbol of Formula One racing, all right? Now, those who know me well knew that, yes, when you're younger, you did some street racing, you did some legal racing too, but when you think about F1 Formula Racing, it is the fastest car out there. There's nothing faster than this car. So then I said, well, God, don't put me down this rabbit hole because this is going down something I like, but I don't know how I'm going to explain it. So I started researching some more, and I did some more digging, and I said, you know what? I would like to find a formula with one. And then this popped up. All right? And who is this? Liam McQueen. And he's supposed to be number one, right? Now, somebody says something about Kachow over here. That's what you remember. But I want you all to focus a second. Don't get too in, but don't say, hey, Renil's up here showing Pixar. All right? Don't, don't, don't get twisted. I want to really want to show you guys what came to my mind through all of this. All right? Now, this is not a Formula One car. It's a NASCAR. And I believe that either your phones listen to you. I really know they do listen to you because this was on a show that Sydney was watching. And then when I was searching it, it was the first thing that popped up. So just to be clear, this is a Formula One car. This is what it looks like, all right? Now, with even this car, in the car movie, he's very arrogant because he knows he's the fastest, all right? He knows he's the fastest. And even the look and smoke on his face is like, you can't beat me. I got it, all right? Now, getting back to this guy, he's the number one in his class, which is NASCAR. And look at that smile. He got it, too. Now... One thing about Formula One racing is the wheels are exposed for a reason. It's to cool off. They cannot be underneath fenders. They get very, very hot. Now, one thing about the tires, the tires, right, are so hot that they have to build different tires for different terrains. Now, this is where I feel sometimes I go down a rabbit hole and I can't get out because then I start researching this. And tires for Formula One racing can go up to 2,700 a set. And they need 13 sets for each race. And then they need, then there's 23 races in the Grand Prix. So when you do the math, just with tires alone, it's over one point something million in just tires, right? Now, the thing about it is the tires are needed is a very big accessory. It is needed. You cannot go anywhere with a Formula One car without its tires. Now, getting back to this one here, and I'm going to talk about the tires a little bit more. One thing about tires, they cost so much, but do you know they only last for three laps to 50? That's a big jump. Three laps. It could last up to three laps or all the way up to 50. So you have to pick and choose when to stop, and you pull into a pit stop. And I'm going to show you guys that in, in, in a while. But you pull into a pit stop to change your tires, because to continue the race, this needs to happen, right? Pit stops is like three times a race, and it change tires. Usually, the other tires is about to come on to put a heat blanket over it to get them warmed up, because you cannot start a race with cold tires, okay? So the, so the, the they heat up these, these tires, and they have all these tires sitting around, just warmed up, waiting for the race to be put on the aircraft, uh, aircraft for the, for the um, car to, to, to race. I always think about airplanes. Um, uh, so one thing about the pit stop is you have to know when to stop. And you have to know when your crew chief, let's call the crew chief God, right? You got to know when he's telling you it is time to stop and actually listen to him. Because what happens if you don't listen to him, you think what's going to happen? Exactly. Crash, uh, the tire would explode. You would not be able to finish this race. Now, the thing about it is this is us. We are very confident in ourselves, right, out there racing not listening to what God has to say. Now, and shortly after, when we think we got it going on, bam, this happens. 
and our tire goes out. By this time, it's too late. You can't even get back to the pit stop. Now, in this movie, and parents don't act like you haven't watched the movie. I know you watch it multiple times with your kids. But this is where sometimes I will sit down and watch some of these Pixar movies and realize at the end of the movies, we need to talk to our, our kids to, act, to let them know what the movie was trying to really say, what it means. Because in this movie, all you're going to know is kachow. You're not going to know when it's time to listen to others, people that have your back, know when to stop, know when that you feel you got it together that you need to stop, come back, get recharged, get refueled, get new tires on, say thanks, and leave. All right? And you younger people might say dip. I know. I know the language. They would say, time to dip. Yes. All right? So, and then you get out there, and then you're asking yourself, why? Why did this happen? Now, the thing about this movie, and I actually rewatched it just for the sermon, believe it or not. Believe it or not, yeah. But sitting here asleep, because I know I was not going to be able to get through this, and, and I really watched it. And I saw it in a different light for the very first time. I really did. And this moment right here is where I saw it differently. We're given the tools. Be given everything, and we don't listen to his command. We don't listen that it's time to stop, get recharged, no matter where it is. Now, the point of this movie right here, right in this clip, when he, was, when he had all four tires, he was behind the last person. He was number one. He was behind the last car. He actually did a lap around them that he was number one behind the last car. But 100 Meters away from the finish line, his tire blew. And when it blew, everyone else had time to get caught up. To the point that now he's desperate. That now the same tongue that was out with the, with the arrogance, the same tongue is out being desperate to try to get to this finish line. Now in this race, he came in third, right? In regards to all the trying he did, the hop, skipping, the jumping he did to get to the finish line, he still wasn't as fast because he did not have a pit stop. Where brings it to this? All right? So, Formula One racing. This is a pit crew. There's a guy on your right with a red jack. He's called a jack man. Okay? He's the most important person in this whole picture, all right? Let's call him Jesus, all right? The car pulls in. Now, at that speed he's going at right now, is technically around like maybe 10 miles per hour, right there. That's why everybody's still, and he's still moving. Believe it or not, the car stops millimeters from his feet, okay? You have to understand the trust you have in your driver, and the trust you still have in those tires that only last three laps. To stand outside there with a jack and wait for your, your driver to come in to stop millimeters from your feet. Okay? And then he gets to work. Now, the crazy thing about it, now this is here my, where how my mind goes. I said, how long does it really take to change these tires? Anybody know? Actually, it's down now. Three. Three seconds. Three seconds to change your tires. So imagine back to Lightning, Lightning McQueen, if he just took the time to get back there to just burn three seconds, he would have had some new tires on and he would have won that race because he had the time, had all the time. One, two, three. I don't know if you guys do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, whatever. Three, three seconds, right? Three seconds. And within the three seconds, the tires would have been changed. Now, there are a lot of people that surrounded that car. Let's call them angels. And these guys fuel 12 liters of fuel in one second. All right? There are three guys changing one tire. Okay? You have the, the gun bolt guy, one take off, one put on, and he does his job again. One, two, three, and he's gone. Just three seconds, all right? Now, what happens is you see it all around in racing, 
and it happens is endless race. And I researched people who didn't change or who didn't stop, who thought they had one more chance to get back. And this happens. And this happens. And then this happens. That you are so upset of the thing that you should have changed that now you're displaying your anger on it. That one thing you could have done to just get back, just in time. Now, let's get back to this Jack guy again. Let's call him Jesus. Again, he lifts his car up in three seconds. All right? Now, there's a backup guy in the back just to make sure everything stabilizes. Again, like I said, there's three guys doing the wheels, and there are two guys changing the stabilizer wing. I almost feel like there's like 25 guys out there when you see it. And one thing about it is this Jack guy, if you think of the math, he works three seconds in every race, I mean three seconds every stop, but it comes up to nine seconds in every race, which usually is like around three and a half minutes annual. That's his annual shift. Three and a half minutes. Getting paid 150,000. I would like to do that one day, but I don't think it's, I'm too old for that now. But, uh, but, but no, but, but you think about it. So one, two, three, mm, and they're gone, all right? Now, I saw this clip, and I said, they don't wait till they get there to come out. They're there waiting. They're anticipating, because they know what their job is is very, very, very important. The time, believe, believe it or not, one to two seconds is a big deal in Formula One racing. So by the time you drop the cup, someone, someone won. And you're like, I just dropped my cup. But that's how it works. Just that one, that just a couple of seconds will, will go by and you will lose a race. Now, these guys are out here sitting down waiting, right? Now, one thing that made me think about that scripture about the, about the, the leopards is back in Matthew, um, back in Matthew, there actually is another story of a leopard, right? And he approached Jesus, and Jesus actually told him, Jesus actually told him, um, so it says that this, Matthew 8, and it says, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, a large crowd followed him, and a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone but go, show yourself to the priests and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now, there's a difference in this scripture than the, the one with the, the ten lepers. The one in Matthew, Jesus actually blessed them right away by healing him. He saw it with his own eyes. All right? He saw it with his own eyes. And then by doing that, he went. But then Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Don't tell, just go to the priests. But the guy didn't. Now, I asked myself, did, I'm sure Jesus knew he wasn't going to do it. He knew he wasn't going to, he knew he wasn't going to not tell anyone. He was going to go and do it. But was that punishment? Was it punishment for the other ten? But that's when the faith has to be strong, right? So the ten lepers saw Jesus coming. And they approached him and said, Master, have pity on us. And all Jesus said, all Jesus said is go. Go and show the priests that you have been healed. You got to think about it, y'all. They didn't get clean yet. They, 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 were still, they were still a leper. You know what I'm saying? They, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me get a chair. Let me show y'all something. Mike. All right, testing. All right, let's say that, okay, one thing about faith I realize, right? You have a chair. You have to depart two ways. The first thing is getting up, all right? And second is moving up forward. 
That's, that's two different ways you have to do it. Some of us, right, we have faith, and we get up, and we look to see. If we don't know what's happening, what do we do? We sit back down, and we wait until we see something that is more worth it to get up and move forward. You guys understand what I'm saying? So in this, in this point, when the leopards, Jesus said, go. I, you know, I don't know if lepers of today would do it. One would have said, and what's going to happen, Jesus? The question would happen, right? And I was like, well, if I go, how far should I go? Is it going to happen before I get to them? Or the next one would be like, I don't know. I'm going to stay right here because they're going to tell me to come back. That trust. But he said, go. But out of desperate, right? They weren't being desperate. They have lived confined away from everyone for so long that they knew who Jesus was. They knew he can do it. Amen. That faith that they had was way much more than what other people would have thought of. So when they got up and he said, go, and this is left, because they knew by the time they got to the end of this church, they will be healed, all right? And that's, and that's, so the whole thing about this Formula One, how this thing came in my head is, you think about it, our pit crew chief, who's in our headset, is in our headset. He's nowhere else, he's not on a speaker, he's not, he's just connected to us directly, all right? And he's in our head saying, hey man, it's time to come in. I think the tires are getting too hot, you've been out there too long, now I got this. Or, you know what, maybe just one more lap so I could gain much more distance. Or maybe, how about if I just maybe just come around this one more time. And then he said, Jesus, get your guys out there. And he's out there just waiting. And as soon as you pull up, millimeters, because he knows you're going to stop. He knows. And when he jacked this car up, and everyone gets around it in three seconds, you refuel with the Holy Spirit right away. Within, within seconds. And then within the last two seconds that you have sitting there, everyone else does everything to prepare you for either the terrain you're about to go back in or the terrain you're about to face or something that's going to change on the track. Because all those tires also fits for different terrains. That's the part I didn't tell you about. Sorry about that. So all the tires fits for different terrains of the race. It's not just one tire fits all. If outside get wet, they come in. If it drizzle, they come in. If it gets hot, they come in. If it dries up completely, they, that track basically changes by the second. Because by all these cars going around, right, the track heats up. So the tires change as well, so they have to change it out. But when it comes to faith, faith happens in the departure. Faith happens when we leave. When people say, well, I'm going to go back, or I'm going to set myself back. For you to set yourself back, this is what you have to do. You deliberately have to get up, and you have to walk behind where you just came from. And most of us really are good at that. Because we already know what this feels like, so instead of going back here, we're thinking like, well, if you go back a different way, would it change? But no, it gets worse. So right here, when we sit down, and we get up, and God said, go, you go. There's no questions asked. You see, in, 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 there's another part in, the, in, in, this, in this picture here that I didn't show you about. This part is interesting. When we pull into the pit, as fast as you were going, and all the debris is flying off those tires, trust me, that's why, they, this is why these guys have all this gear on. They did not have the gear on because it looked cool, all right? The heat, y'all have to understand, the heat comes off the, these cars, and the tires are tremendously like out of this world. And when these tires come in, they're picking up pieces of rubber, they're throwing off pieces of rubber, and everything is just hidden. So that's why they have helmets on. That's why they have um, gear on, because to keep away the heat off their bodies. But what's really cool about this picture is the focal point of the guy in front, the Jack guy. He's on everybody's crew, not just yours. He's on everybody's crew. And he is there to make sure everything happens in a short period of time. You know, m when, I started, when I started out um, my business, I think I was tested more than everything before. I remember my mom asked me, 
you really want to do this? Because we opened the business back in 2021. You really want to do this? You know, you got a good job working at the airport with a private jet company, and, you know, Sydney is about to turn one, well, two. She's about to turn two. It's like, really? And I said, Mom, you have taught me to have faith, and now I want to practice it. It seems like you're fearful about it. And she stopped for a second. Now, I'm sure if I was in front of her, I wouldn't say it like that, you know? But it just made me, I, that what came out my mouth, and she said it was quiet, and she said, you know what? I can't say nothing. Because you have to understand, you cannot dig up and doubt what you planted in faith. You can't. You can't dig up and doubt what you planted in faith because you know that's the reason why you planted it. You think farmers do that? You think farmers go out every day to see if something's going to grow? They know. They know that they've done it for so long that they have faith that it's going to work. They, they, they know. And especially, and that's why teachers are great at what they do because they know that when they plant that seed, of education in these young people, it's gonna work. Sometimes it takes that one, that one person to go the extra mile, which is one, the extra degree, which is one, the extra focus, which is one. And we get ourselves here. And this, this don't have to happen. We, we, we don't even have to get to this point because this is way past three, three, three laps or four laps. And when we feel like we're drowning, we have known the story before. That's where it comes in. Our faith makes us strong. Our faith keeps us whole. Our faith allows us to help others when we can't help themselves. And then we forget it's not about us anymore. It's about others. Because deep down inside, our faith can be rattled. And guess who shows up every single time? Amen. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's one thing I'm about to close. Um, where is it? There is a... Let me see if I can find it here. There is a uh, song that popped up on my, my feed um, this past week. And stop this here. All right. Go back. All right, so there's a song that popped up on my feed list past week, and it said, for some reason, my, my laptop is reading everything I'm saying. Let me turn off my dictation. I'm gonna try to read it from far so this doesn't pick up my voice. You guys hear me? I'm sorry, y'all, because this, this part is very important. Whew, I had to tell my laptop to stop listening. All right. So this part said, this, this, and I'm about to close, and it said, didn't I conquer this last year? Tell me what I miss, because I fear that it's coming back up again. Must be something I ate. Song, some show, some hate. The devil wants to extend, extend the game, free throws. And when it ends, he wants to make the sequel. Because if he has another chance, he feels that he can take my joy, my peace, my faith. You see, the devil, he learns from your mistakes. 
even if you don't. And that's how he keeps you in cycles and just cycles. In cycles and cycles. But we're not going in cycles. Cycles, right? We're not going in cycles because that jack guy is going to stop us and refuel us. He's going to get the tires up. He's going to make sure we're good so we can conquer what we're going through. I appreciate you guys this morning. I hope you guys were blessed. Amen. Our closing.